Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Almock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'll be coloring a glass honey jar today, among a few other things, using a stamp set from Honeybee Stamps. And I decided to start by coloring the lid for it, and these are fabric lids, so I thought it would be fun to do a little coloring on some pattern paper. So I picked a scrap of green that I liked, and I colored with some gray and then with a YG color so that the markers would match the coloring on the paper itself. And I'm making the center portion a little bit darker because that's where my string is gonna go around. I'm actually going to physically tie a string around, but there is in the stamp set a little stamped twine that you can stamp right on top. And I will add that on. What this is going to do, doing that first, is to tell me whether or not the other colors are gonna work together. So I'm just gonna leave that sitting on the paper to make sure the intensity of my other colors matches the intensity of that little lid. And I've done this a couple times on some things that I've posted on Instagram and haven't done any how-tos on coloring glass with like a window reflection. But I find that doing like a, an off-kilter curved window, even if you don't get the rest of the shading right, can make anything look like it's shiny and glassy. So I'm leaving an empty space for that, that kind of curved window. And then I'm gonna add a few spots with a V12 marker. And you know, this is bold. You know, a lot of people don't like using purple with their yellow, but that's what I like to do. So you could use a darker yellow color if you wished. And I want it to transition from the top down. So I don't want the dark color in the entire surrounding area around the window. So I'm just gonna do it around part of it and then use a yellow marker to extend that darker shape. To create the bottom, I'm just gonna do a little oval on the very, very bottom, which is going to look like the bottom of the glass. And this is going to be very liquid honey, by the way, the way that I'm coloring it. It's not going to look like it's thick at all since you can see through to the bottom, but that's okay. So then I will stretch the color down a little bit further and go over that purple so it makes it into more of a yellow. And this is Y17, my favorite yellow color. And then I'll add just a few other spots that are a darker, that darker orange yellow. And now I'm gonna go in with a regular darker yellow. And I'm not going to leave very much of just that Y02 that I started with in the very beginning because I just wanted more color. And that's where the intensity of the pattern of paper comes in because I wanted more intensity in this color. If I went too pale, then it just wouldn't go to put that, that really dark color for the fabric on top. For the bottom, I'm adding some color in there and I wanted to have some difference in that top section. So I'm feathering up from that very bottom just to allow some of that at the bottom to look like it's, I don't know, different. There's no real science to doing this. You know, put the highlight here, put the shadow there. It's just a feel for it. You could Google images that look like what you want to color and follow those for shading and highlighting if you want. But now I want to start pulling together colors that work with the whole image. So I started with the same YG color and realized that that was going to be a little darker than I wanted. So I only put a little bit of that color on and then with, when then went blah, 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 can't talk with a YG11 in order to fill in the rest of the leaves because I wanted them to match that green pattern paper. And whether or not it comes through on video, they do match in real life. You may not have noticed that I had some hexagons stamped in the back. That's one of the things that of course attracted me to buying this stamp set because I'm the hexagon lady. So I decided to stamp a bunch of those in the background. background. The stamp set has three of them in a little grouped trio and I'm just gonna fill them in. If you have wanted to have some stamps that you can create some little hex swatches with, you could get this stamp set and have those three little ones and then stamp that onto your swatch sheets. You could do that in different kinds of inks and create for yourself little, little swatches and you could do it on watercolor paper, you could do it on Copic friendly paper, or whatever you need to, to make some hexagon swatches. I also use stencils quite a bit to do that kind of a thing, drawing them in with pencils. So I'm going to fill in the ones on the bottom to the paper stretches a little higher and you'll see a little better view of that later. But I'm going to fill in the ones on the bottom. There is a little smudge of ink that I wanted to make sure I covered up 
but I'm also being a little gingerly with this very, very light yellow everywhere where I'm touching ink. Because even though my ink is dry, I actually stamped this the day before I did the coloring, sometimes you just get a little bleeding with very, very pale colors. It is just the nature of the beast, even with Copic friendly inks. I've stamped this one in the Avery L ink and there's just some areas where it's it's just always going to be a problem with very light colors. I don't know why that is, but you don't see it in colors with a little more heft to them. But I got a little tiny bit of bleeding, but you, you just have to work with it when it comes up and figure that out. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading kind of at the top left of each one of these little shapes just to give them some dimension. I could make them just flat if I wanted, but I thought it would be fun to challenge myself to try to make a little bit of shapes out of them. But I wanted the color to remain really soft and not have black outlines around it. So I'm trying to keep them in just the yellow tones and make them very light in the background and make this picture look like it's out in the foreground with that behind it. So whether, whether that's a wall behind it with this design spilling down, but I think it works to have all those honeycombs with the little bee flying up there as well. And in the Copic Jumpstart class, there's a whole assignment at the very end of class where you get lots of practice coloring in hexagons of all different sorts. I have not seen very many people thus far attempt that piece, but it's certainly something that would be good practice to do some blending with. And there will be a link on my blog, as always, to the Copic Jumpstart class. You can take that at any time. It does not have to be just during that live portion of the class. All right, back to coloring the image now, because I, I have a better idea now. Oh, sorry, there are fireworks going on outside. If you're hearing noises in the background, I'll apologize now. I had one start me, uh, start my heart a, a few minutes ago. It just got really loud. The uh, color that I decided to use for the flowers is purple, and that's because it's opposite of yellow on the color wheel. So as I was working through this, I was trying to decide what color these flowers would be, and I wanted them to either be white flowers with just a little bit of purple, but as I went, I liked seeing more and more purple on them. So I'm using a BV02. If you wanted them to be more light, I would start with a lighter BV color, and I'm just putting some shading toward the middle of it and then I'll eventually get lighter with colors around the outside edges. But this would also be fun with other kinds of colors, but I thought for this one I wanted that honey jar to be the thing that really sings and uh, takes precedence on the card itself. So I'm going to take a BV00 and soften out some of those areas, just do a couple little quick flicks, knowing that I was going to use a lighter color as well to do a little bit more. And I'm just going to soften each one of those out. Sometimes my flicks are with the side of the marker to get a wider stroke so I don't end up with all kinds of lines. And then I went with a quadruple zero so that I could really get in there and get some softness going in all of my blends and lighten that color up. If it gets to be too much color, you can always go over the whole thing with a little bit of colorless blender and see if you can pull some of the color out. But I was really liking the soft purple on all of this. I think it contrasts really well with all of the yellow honey jar and the yellow in the background. So next up I knew I needed to color my bee so I used two different yellows, a yellow and a yellow orange for that and then a little bit of a dark gray color for the bee and I had to put a little bit of the purple into his wings. And now I'm going to add a ground underneath of it just so it sits there and there's that little spot, I don't know if you can even see it anymore, in that little hexagon, the very first one underneath of there, of that black smudge of ink that was a finger smudge. But I knew I was going to put some ground underneath of that and it was in a spot where I could basically hide it and no one would see it. And I'm even having trouble seeing it as I'm doing this voiceover. And I'm just going to use a couple of W markers, which are warm grays. You could also use the cool grays or toners or anything, doesn't matter which ones of the grays you use for a ground like this, but I thought the warm grays would work nicely here. And there is my finished card. I tied my twine around the fabric little portion that I created, added a little tag that says sweet as, and glued them on the card. 
left it on a card base. These are card bases from Avery L that are actually vertical cards. So I was very happy to see that there was such a pack in the world because I like these cards that fold on the top side. Here are a couple other videos if you're looking for more. There's a few of these that have cups and glasses and jars to get more information on how to color glass and see through things. You can hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. And I put out about three videos a week so you'll get lots more fun coming in your inbox. Supplies are all listed in the doobly-doo. I will see you guys later. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.